How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we take a look at the top iPhone 11 features. Of course, this is just the beginning of our iPhone 11 coverage here on 9to5Mac. Stay tuned for a full review and more in-depth analysis and coverage. But first, a brief word from our sponsor. If you're looking to step up your branding and or website game, then look no further. Wix.com is the solution. You can professionally brand your business in just minutes with their online professional logo maker, build a super sleek and functional e-commerce site, and bring your ideas to life with their blog creation tool. Those are just three of the many useful tools that Wix has to offer. So make sure to hit that link in the description down below and start building your brand today. Thanks to Wix.com for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Now let's get on with the video. How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is the iPhone 11. As you can see, I have both new colors in the building. So I have the purple and I have the new green color. This is of course the follow up to the iPhone 10R, which was the so-called budget model for last year's releases. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Here we go with the purple one. We'll just peel the wrapper off like that and we'll slide the wrapper out of the way. All right, so let's take the box off. There we go, folks. This is the iPhone 11 in purple. Let's pull up like that. And now inside the box, you see the getting started information, your typical design by Apple in California packet. And then you have your AirPod, oh, I'm sorry, EarPods. And then you have your five watt power adapter. So you don't get the faster adapter inside the iPhone 11 box like you do the iPhone 11 Pro. So there are those EarPods. You also have a lightning to USB cable, typical iPhone unboxing here. So inside the packet, you get your getting started guide. So it gives you some basic general tips on how to use your phone. And then you get a SIM eject tool and you also get some regulatory information. And of course you get your Apple stickers. All right, so another thing I noticed, you get this cute little indention on the top of the box for this square camera housing on the iPhone 11. So you do get color matched iPhone text, color matched Apple logo, and this is the 64 gigabyte model. Now, we also have the green version here. That's another new color for this year. So we're gonna just take the wrapper off like this and we'll take the box off. There is our green iPhone 11. Which one do you think looks better? Let me know down below in the comments. Obviously everything inside the box is gonna be the same, so we're not gonna go through all that again. Now one interesting thing I noticed when comparing the boxes for this year's models versus last year's models, you'll notice that the phone is the first thing you see on the iPhone 11, whereas the getting started guide packet is the first thing you see on the iPhone 10R. So Apple wants you to see that phone immediately now on the iPhone 11. Now you'll also notice that there is no plastic protector on the rear of the iPhone like an iPhone releases past, which is a good thing. You're reducing waste that way. Now let's go ahead and get the front screen protector peeled off just like that. All right, so let's talk about the 10R. Last year, the 10R started at $750, went all the way up to $899, but this year the iPhone 11 starts at just $699 and goes up to $849. So you're getting more phone for your money, which just usually doesn't happen with Apple releases. Now the iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max cost significantly more starting at $999, going all the way up to $1449. So you're saving a lot more money with the iPhone 11. This is the phone to get in my opinion. You get those new colors, you get the purple, you get the green. I personally like the look of the iPhone 11. It's a much more attractive phone than I initially imagined it would be. Um, yeah, and I think most people, this is the phone for them given the price and given the feature set. Now let's talk about some other little details. You have a repositioned Apple logo. So notice on the 10R, the Apple logo is up high, but now it's smack in the middle on the iPhone 11 to help balance out that rectangular camera housing. Now there's also no iPhone text at the bottom again in an attempt to balance out the look of the rear of the phone. Now one good thing is that the iPhone 11, even though it has more features, a new camera, it's the same size and weight of the iPhone XR, which I thought was reasonable, a manageable size at 6.1 inches for that display. So outside of that camera housing, everything looks exactly the same on all sides of the iPhone 11 when compared to the iPhone XR. 
Now I have to admit, I was skeptical about the look of the camera housing on the iPhone 11, but thankfully it doesn't really look anything like those mock-ups from earlier, but it looks really good, especially because you get a color matched matte finish on the back of that camera housing, as you can see there. And it really contrasts well with that glossy finish on the back of the rest of the phone. So I think the camera housing, they did a really good job with it. I don't think you could really make something like that look any better. The iPhone 11 gives you one hour of extra battery life when compared to the 10R, which is significant because last year's 10R was already the best iPhone from a battery life perspective, although the Pro is even better now. Now, speaking of Pro, the A13 CPU inside the iPhone 11 is the same CPU you find inside the iPhone Pro. So that means the baseline iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro are basically going to perform exactly the same from a CPU performance perspective. So let's go ahead and run the Geekbench test. On the very right is the iPhone 11. In the middle is the top dog from last year, the 10s Max, and then on the left is the iPhone 10R. Now the iPhone 10R only had three gigabytes of RAM, but you'll notice that the iPhone 11 now has an additional gigabyte of RAM for a total of four gigabytes. So now let's go ahead and run this Geekbench test. And of course we'll speed this up. We're not gonna make you wait through this entire test here. And then we'll see the results coming up right about now. So we get the first result there. Obviously the 11 finished first. You see that multi-core score of 34, 39. So that's significant. Also single core, 1326. Obviously these will vary a little bit. Um, just each time you run it, it's gonna vary slightly, but this gives you a general ballpark idea of what to expect performance wise. So now we're waiting for the 10S Max and the 10R, which should be coming up here shortly. You see, a significantly improved multi-core score and a noticeable bump, a respectable bump in single core performance as well. But here's the thing, the A13 pulls this off and at the same time is way less power hungry than the A12. There's also significantly improved machine learning capabilities. Now Apple's U1 ultra wideband chip appears for the first time in the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, bringing ultra wideband technology to the iPhone for the very first time. Now this allows for spatial awareness, giving you the ability to point your iPhone or just have it in the vicinity of another U1 enabled device. And it's gonna pop up there for airdrop and let you know that device is close by. So you'll get little haptic feedback as well to tell you that it's close by. It's just a really cool introduction into wideband technology. This is just the beginning. Now you're gonna get faster face ID on the iPhone 11 according to Apple, but in my testing, I think this is just mainly an iOS 13 thing. Uh, the speeds are exactly the same here when I tested the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 11. The iPhone 11 supports spatial audio. Here is the iPhone 10R. I'm watching Spider-Man, which supports Dolby Atmos. Now, when I watch it on the iPhone 11, I definitely notice enhanced sound. Now, it doesn't sound like real surround sound, but it's definitely improved. Speaking of improvements, there's networking enhancements with the iPhone 11. You now get gigabit class LTE, and you also get 802.11ax support, or AKA Wi-Fi 6 support for those upcoming Wi-Fi 6 enabled routers. And iOS 13 also gives you WPA3. Now the iPhone 10R featured water resistance up to one meter for up to 30 minutes, but the iPhone 11 doubles the depth capabilities, providing up to 30 minutes of water resistant for up to two meters. Obviously this isn't two meters, but it's a nice demonstration of the water resistance capabilities anyway. Don't do this, but if you happen to do this, if you happen to drop your phone in the toilet or drop it in the sink, chances are it's gonna be a-okay. The iPhone 11 wide angle camera features many of the same characteristics as the wide angle camera on the 10R. That's a 26 millimeter wide angle lens, f1.8 aperture, 12 megapixels. But on this year's model, you now get 100% phase detection focused pixels, which is going to give you improved autofocus and better low light capability. As you can see here, less noise on the iPhone 11. But obviously the big deal this year is the presence of that ultra wide camera, that second camera in that camera housing, that is what sets it apart and changes the game. Here is the wide shot, here's an ultra wide shot. Notice the huge difference. So here's a wide shot and here's an ultra wide shot. Here is a wide shot, here's an ultra wide shot. No doubt it's a massive improvement, especially for outdoor photography. Now. You also get a slightly larger and brighter true tone flash. It's gonna be brighter in both flash mode and flashlight mode. 
and you're gonna notice a redesigned camera app on the iPhone 11. So the 10 is on the right, the iPhone 11's here. Notice little subtle differences like the shutter buttons are different. And Apple, as you notice, even changed the font for the camera app's different modes. Now there's also a zoom out button, which we'll talk about in a second. That allows you to use the ultra wide camera. Now notice the front facing camera button that's changed. You also have new UI at the top of the display, new UI for dark photography or low light photography. Um, this is just a completely redesigned camera app. And you also will notice that the frame itself, the viewfinder is different. Now you can actually see outside the viewfinder, which there's a reason for that. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So you saw that zoom button, or it's not really a zoom, it's more of a zoom out button that allows you to take advantage of that wide angle camera. And you can see how it sort of seamlessly switches between the two. Now, one thing I didn't notice is that the cameras aren't exactly the same from a color reproduction uh, perspective. Uh, you're gonna see minor color differences between those two cameras but it's fairly seamless. Apple did a really good job with the software here. We'll talk all about that in our full review of the iPhone 11 uh, soon to come. Now, if you swipe up, you get additional UI. A lot of things are hidden here. So you have your night mode settings. We'll talk about that as well. You have your live photo settings. Now there's a live auto option. So it will automatically determine when to use a live photo or when not to. And you can also change up your aspect ratio. Remember there used to be that standalone square shooting mode for photos, now no more. You can find all that within this sub menu here. So that's really nice. You can switch between four, three, 16 by nine or one by one. And then there's also your timer and your filters as well. Now let's switch over to landscape mode so I can better illustrate to you the different framing options here on the iPhone 11. So notice how the frame of the ultra wide view disappears when I put my hand in front because it's focusing on that hand. It's an up close shot and it knows that it will result in a very bad looking photo. Like when you try to use the ultra wide camera indoors without the necessary amount of light, it's not going to perform very well. So the iPhone automatically says, hey, let's just stick to the wide angle camera in that in that instance. So you also have some new composition tool options here. You'll see the ability to capture outside the frame for photos, videos, and to auto apply adjustments when editing. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I took a photo and this photo was taken with the wide angle camera, not the ultra wide camera, but it captured ultra wide data. So basically it'll pull in the data from the ultra wide camera sensor so that I'm able to use it in my editing workflow. We'll have more on this in a future video. If you like to shoot low light photos, but hate the look that you get from a flash, the unnatural look that a flash produces, then you're gonna love night mode on the iPhone 11. So let me show you how to use it. First of all, let me show you this environment. I have a candle, that's gonna be my source of light. Uh, so it's not gonna be able to shoot in the dark, but we're gonna get close. I'm gonna use Siri to turn off all the lights and now the only source of light is that candle, which isn't a lot as you can see here. So once those lights go off, you see night mode is enabled automatically. So you, there's nothing you have to do to enable night mode. It knows it's dark, it's gonna turn on night mode for you. But it's good to know that you can manually enable night mode or adjust the long exposure settings if you wish to do so. All right, so now let's go ahead and compose our shot. You can see I'm gonna change it to auto mode. All right, so I'm gonna focus on this keyboard in the background, take a shot, and you can see that long exposure. So you wanna hold the camera still, or the iPhone still, while it's taking that photo with night mode enabled. If you don't, it's gonna be blurry. Now I took another photo with the flash, and we're gonna compare. So this is with the light zone. You can see how the keyboard looks in the background. Looks pretty good. All right, this is with just the candlelight. So no flash, no night mode. So this is with the flash, obviously terrible. And this is with night mode. So you can tell the difference is huge there. It doesn't look like daylight, but it looks really good considering we were just shooting by candlelight. You can even make out some of the details on the monitor in the background. And this wasn't even a good environment. This was actually a pretty terrible environment, but it still performed well. Another new iPhone 11 camera app feature is quick take. So now instead of having to switch over to video mode to take a video when you're shooting photos, you can save time and perhaps catch that precious moment right from photo mode in the camera app. So say you're taking photos, I'm just gonna 
snap a few shots, and I wanna take a video, you simply press and hold on the shutter button. And now you can see it's taking a video, you can see the timer at the top, and when I'm done, just release, and the video stops. So press and hold, video goes, release, video stops. Now, if I slide to the right while holding, Quick Take will lock in the video mode and it'll just continuously shoot video until you unlock it or press the stop button. You can also take photos while in video mode. So I'm gonna slide back over and complete my video just like that. Now, what about burst mode, you may be thinking? Well, they've thought of that as well. You simply press the shutter button, slide to the left instead of the right, and that will initiate burst mode. Portrait mode on the iPhone XR, which is in my hand right now, was nice, but here's the thing. It only worked with people. Not cats, not dogs, not even stuffed animals. But here, with the iPhone 11, which I have in my hand right now, you can see that portrait mode works with inanimate objects, cats, dogs, etc. And thanks to iOS 13 upgrades, portrait mode gets an additional boost on the iPhone 11. So when we edit this photo, of course, you can change the portrait effect. And new in iOS 13, you can change the portrait lighting intensity. And this is not new, but of course you can change the aperture to adjust the background blur. Let's go back to our portrait lighting. So like I said, you can change the portrait lighting intensity using this little slider here. And you'll also find a new portrait mode effect, which is called high key light mono at the very end right here. So just play around with the different effects and find the one you like the best. The new audio zoom feature literally makes it so you can zoom into your audio. Listen. The iPhone 11 gives you 4K 60 frames per second video capture across not just one camera, not just two cameras, but all three cameras. That includes the true death front facing camera as well. But you know, like I always say, I can show you better than I can tell you. So I'm gonna show you. Here it is, the wide angle camera you see in the upper right hand corner, 4K 60 frames per second. Let's switch to the ultra wide camera. You see again, 4K 60 frames per second. Let's switch to the front facing true depth camera. What are we gonna have there? 4K 60 frames per second. And for the first time, you now get 4K 60 frames per second cinematic video stabilization. Notice on the iPhone 11 how much smoother it is thanks to that cinematic video stabilization. Whereas the iPhone XR, when you're shooting at 4K 60, it's a little wobbly, I gotta admit. It's a little wobbly. So that iPhone 11 is gonna be a little bit better equipped to handle run and gun video capture situations. Extended dynamic range was capped on the iPhone XR at 30 frames per second. On the iPhone 11, extended dynamic range is supported up to 60 frames per second in this video you can tell, especially in the highlights. Smart HDR on the iPhone XR was good. It blended the best parts of separate exposures into a single photo. And this is good for capturing photos with extreme highlights and shadows. On the iPhone 11, Smart HDR is even better. It's so much better that Apple no longer includes the option to keep the normal photo when using Smart HDR. Now the 12 megapixel true depth camera gets a significant upgrade over the old camera in the iPhone XR, which is only seven megapixels. You also notice that the new camera on the iPhone 11 has a wider native 23 millimeter focal length. This combined with that extra five megapixels of resolution allows that camera to crop in for its default view. And then when you wanna zoom back out to the native focal length, you just tap the little zoom button right there on the interface above the shutter. Now this front facing camera, as mentioned earlier, also has the ability to shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. And you see the difference in focal length between the two on video. Now here's a cool feature. When you place the phone into landscape mode while viewing with the true depth camera, it will automatically zoom out, so to speak, in order to fit a group of friends in the frame. And then of course there is for the very first time the ability to take slow motion videos with the front facing true depth camera. So you can go into slow-mo mode and now you're gonna find the option to switch between the rear and front facing camera. So let's do so right now. All right, so let's take a video in slow-mo mode. And I don't have long hair, so that's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna wave this towel around in front of the camera. All right, so now we're gonna watch it and see what it looks like. So there we go. There's all 120 frames of slow motion goodness, just like that.
So ladies and gentlemen, that has been our hands-on look at the top features for the iPhone 11. Stay tuned for much, much, much more coverage. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We'll have a full review of the iPhone 11 with some more in-depth analysis to come. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate this video and also leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the iPhone 11. Now a final word from our sponsor. We wanna give another shout out to the sponsor of today's nine to five Mac video, Wix. Make sure to hit that link in the description down below to check out some of their awesome web tools. Between their logo maker, e-commerce site builder, and blog creator tools, they've got a lot of stuff you'd need to get your brand nice and polished. Again, special thanks to Wix for sponsoring nine to five Mac on YouTube.